Martin Overgaard, we are here at Glunsen Jensen's headquarter in, uh, in, in Denmark, right? And um, thank you very much for taking time to see us here from Inkis today. So uh, pleasure to meet you. We have already had a good fun, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Glunsen Jensen is a quite old company. Can you just bring us up to speed? What is Glunsen Jensen and, and what is it you do? I'll do my best to do that. And first of all, welcome to uh, Glunsen Jensen. We are happy to, to have you here in Nyborg in Denmark. And as you all are aware, we are, we are a relatively old company uh, that grew up in the, uh, the offset segment of the graphic industry. And uh, since 10 years or so, we have moved uh, also into Flexo, both uh, solvent and uh, thermal, via a couple of acquisitions of uh, DGraph in Italy and uh, Microflex here from, uh, from Denmark. So we're now present both in the uh, offset and uh, Flexo solvent flexor thermal uh, parts of the graphic industry. Mm. And uh, you are a relative new CEO to the company. So uh, tell us a little bit your background and who you are also as a person. That's correct. I've been with Glunsen Jensen now since uh, September of uh, 2019, so a little over a year. Um, and prior to joining Glunsen Jensen, I worked in uh, various different industries. I'm actually an auditor by training. Uh, I don't think the auditor stand will be uh, so proud of that right now, but uh, I've, I've been uh, working with, with other businesses uh, for almost 20 years. I've been uh, working with office furniture, with uh, semiconductors, and with uh, heavy rotating equipment, and uh, now I joined John a little over a year ago. And if you look at uh, your business history, um, uh, and, and we spoke about before the cameras turned on that this industry is, uh, uh, is, is a challenge to many people, mm -hmm. especially if you come from large industries or from other industries. So uh, all the, the things that you have from your past, is that something that you can use also in your relation to your new job? Absolutely, uh, for sure. I mean, the, uh, the graphics industry uh, is, uh, is, is pretty segmented, in my opinion. So the, the offset part has been suffering quite heavily over... Over some years, maybe decades, uh, because of the reduction in uh, in printed uh, magazines, books, uh, newspapers, that kind of stuff. While the the flexor segment has been uh, growing, uh, packaging is is growing, and this is actually something we've seen uh, an increased growth uh, here during the uh, the COVID period that we are currently uh, encountering. Mm -hmm. Uh, with all due respect, uh, and maybe I'm, I'm I'm not right, but you know the way I always seen Glenn Jensen when you talk about the offset, it's like if you look at offset, you have like low volume, mid volume, high volume, and you have different segments in the industry. I think that that one of the advantages that uh, that uh, I remember Glenn Jensen made uh, with use of the Epson uh, print heads, you used the uh, offset plates using a simple inkjet technology. Mm -hmm. That was uh, I think that is still something that you do. But is that when you talk about the decrease in the in the demand of offset print is that because that segment has been replaced by for example digital or is it entirely uh, that segment that is disappearing from your perspective and as we see it the uh, the whole offset segment has been shrinking i mean mm -hmm. i think we're still uh, a strong player in the offset market for sure both in the let's say traditional offset equipment but also what you're referring to with the with the inkjet technology so what we refer to as the ictp mm -hmm. Uh, this is still uh, a strong uh, platform for us. We have a pretty significant installed base, and we're actually still doing uh, development of machines in the ITCGB. So we are launching a new product, uh, more or less as we speak, that okay. we uh, we have high expectations to. Mm -hmm. um, this product is is especially uh, good for for let's say smaller volume customers in remote locations, where because it's a standalone system, and um, and we're able to supply. Uh, state-of-the-art technology in that segment and also deliver the, the consumables for that. So that's something we are we still have high expectations to. Mm -hmm. And it must be nice because we spoke about that. I think everybody has during the pandemic experienced a lot of uh, challenges, both business-wise and sales-wise, sales and marketing-wise. And I think that from that perspective, you have been able to both uh, manufacture and develop new equipment. You have also been able to consolidate your production facility. Can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, that's correct. As, as <coughs> I think many, uh, many other businesses, both in the graphic industry, but also in, in many other industries, we have had... Uh, We've had a tough time uh, during the pandemic, uh, but we've managed to, uh, to make the best use of it by uh, consolidating our manufacturing, as you're rightfully saying. From uh, in, Previously, we had manufacturing both in Denmark and in Slovakia, and we've now consolidated all our manufacturing in, uh, in our facility in Slovakia, which is our own facility, so it's been, it's been 
it's been there for 15 years. Uh, previously, it was making uh, mainly offset. Then we transferred the flexor solvent. And during the pandemic here, we also transferred our thermal flexor activities there. So we now uh, completely consolidated our entire manufacturing and also our spare parts, pick, pack and ship in Slovakia. Uh, so we are now, uh, we have a shorter time to market and we also have a much more lean and efficient uh, setup. So mm. that's been, as I said, I think we made good use of, of, uh, of a critical situation. Mm. And uh, in the pandemic, did you all have uh, any opportunities to go to Slovakia in this process or you just had to look at that from, a, from an iPad or something like that? <laughs> uh, we, we, we used a lot of, uh, of new technology, so to speak, but we also managed to get there a couple mm. of times. Uh, I still, th- I'm a big believer still in uh, in meeting people in person and uh, and following uh, following activities. So, mm. as as you are probably more aware than I, it's not easy to travel these days. But um, but with a little uh, hiccups here and there, we managed to get there a couple of times over mm. the last uh, six to nine months. Mm. I remember uh, because I spoke to you, uh, one of your predecessors, uh, many years ago, just when we started. Uh, I think it was maybe one of the first ten interviews we did was with uh, your predecessor, Kel uh, mm-hmm. Jensen, I think his name was, uh, and I think that was after uh, the establishment of Slovakia was still reasonably new, and and your your operation there now is a, capable of handling all your technologies. How how is it to you know manage a company from Denmark and then you know that production and and uh, I think do you also do some R&D in Slovakia or is yes it, we yeah. also do R&D there. we have yeah. we still have R&D in Denmark but mm-hmm. we also have some R&D people in Slovakia it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, managing on the distance this is uh, it's it's a little bit of discipline it's on its own mm-hmm. uh, luckily I've had many years of experience with that and I think the um, as with many things in life it all depends uh, on people uh, mm-hmm. on both sides so we are We're lucky we have a good uh, and well-trained staff in uh, in Slovakia. And we also uh, recently hired a uh, Slovakian COO Mm -hmm. who's uh, taking care of all the manufacturing. So I think different to how it was in the past. We now have, um, that's probably not the right way to say it, but we have a a pull from Slovakia to get more work, so to speak, whereas Mm -hmm. in the past we had more push strategies. So the Danish organization was saying, was pushing everything to them. You have to do this, but we keep this. Whereas now we have, we have the other way around. The Slovakians are saying, come why why can't we have that and that and that also? So does that uh, mean also that, uh, that uh, the functions you have here in Denmark is more like servicing uh, everything that you do in Slovakia also, or? I think that will be the end result. Yeah. Yeah. But right right now the, we have, as I said, we have the management is still, uh, part of the management is still in Denmark. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, very skilled back office people here, uh, installation people. Mm-hmm. We have finance functions here and we have R&D for certain uh, segments, mm-hmm. uh, but all the rest is now in Slovakia. Mm. Regardless of how great this sounds, it's also a fact that, you know, the entire world is changing. A lot of people are talking about moving into digital technologies. Uh, and and uh, how do you see uh, Glunds and Jensen's role in the future uh, market for both, both for the label packaging, Flexo and for Offset? How do you see uh, your role in this, yep. uh, in, this, uh, in this future? I mean, I don't think anybody, and for sure not myself, are able to predict what what new normal is going to look like in the industry after the dust has settled. But you have, the, but you have to make some decisions, right? Exactly, and, yeah. and we are we yeah. are making decisions for mm. sure. Uh, but but we whatever market is left, we still believe uh, firmly that we will be a strong player in those markets. Mm. Of course, the the digital print is uh, is somehow pushing into uh, to our field of competence. On the other hand, what we're still seeing and hearing from a lot of customers is that. They still uh, they want to stick to the let's say traditional uh, mm. uh, technology. So you you basically see this as an opportunity to have both uh, the analog version and the analog production side by side by electronic di- and and digital production, and that's where you also see a role for Glunds and Jensen in in the nearby future. Absolutely. Mm. And and uh, I can't help think about because. Um, uh, As I remember from the past, and maybe I'm not 100% up to date, but I remember you was extremely uh, uh, successful, for example, in the American market where you have a lot of smaller printers is still doing like uh, one, two, three, four colors offset in, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. small printers. Is that still a market that you address? Yes, we still address the North American market. I think what we, if we look... I was not thinking just about the North American market, but also the smaller segment in the market. Or, or where yes. do you see your role? Mm. Yes, we, 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 we address that for sure. I mean, we, our distribution channels are, we are we are addressing some of the, what you're saying, that the smaller customers buy, uh, buy dealers. And then we obviously work with the, with the major OEMs as well. Mm. Um, I think if you look historically at the Gunnarsson Jensen performance, we've been very strong in Europe and in North America. And we've had less, less focus on uh, on Asia and Latin America, mm-hmm. and this is 
some of the things we're looking at right now because these markets are at least percentage-wise growing faster than the traditional markets in Europe and North America. So we are trying to to refocus our our sales efforts so we get a, a more balanced approach to the markets where there is still growth. Mm. And how difficult is that? Uh, I, I can tell you when we when we find out if we succeed or not. But uh, of course, it's not easy. Mm. Uh, but uh, but on the other hand, I think focus uh, makes a big difference here. And, mm. and for sure, in the past, we've not had a huge focus on those segments. Mm. I can also mention that we've just hired a new uh, chief commercial officer, Martin Malia Malo, mm. who is coming from uh, from one of our competitors, mm-hmm. and uh, he will hopefully uh, push these uh, these uh, tasks even uh, even harder. So mm. I'm comfortable that we will uh, will succeed uh, and still be a strong player in in the markets that we're present also after the pandemic. Mm. What is difficult to say is how will the markets look? Mm. But, uh, so so it, it, I cannot put a number on how are we going to perform? Uh, Fair but enough. I can say that we will we will be there and we'll be strong. Mm. Uh, some of the things I've been talking to a lot of people about during the pandemic is also that the pandemic seems to have changed focus from printers to move ahead in the maybe digitalization curve faster than anticipated. Is that something that you feel? Because I mean, you are you are uh, you're addressing some of the markets that could be digital, right? Mm-hmm. So I was just wondering if that is something you see as a challenge also in that perspective of making sure that you get your products to market. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a potential challenge. We haven't seen so much of it yet, uh, to be honest with you. We, uh, most of our customers, they still, uh, they're still uh, loyal to the uh, to the strategy. Sorry, to the products that we are we are providing them with. So, um, so what what we've seen so far is more that the total market has shrunk, not so much that we have been uh, that it's been cannibalized by the by the digital print. Mm. But, but of course, the players in digital. They're big. They try to take everything they can, right? Exactly. And yeah. They're big and they're pushing hard. So, mm-hmm. so it's definitely something that we are that we're watching carefully. Mm. Your business is that both machinery and consumables, or it's uh, machinery for for the most part. We're doing consumables um, primarily for the uh, ICTB segment that we uh, that we talked about a little earlier. Yeah. So when you look at the the uh, during the pandemic, I mean, I could imagine that maybe maybe the consumables is maybe steady or maybe even growing, and I could imagine that maybe the machine sales is a little bit less than normal. Uh, is that something that you think can uh, you know change the perspective of where you see your business also in the future? I think your imagination is right. <laughs> 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 um, I, but. Uh, I'm hopeful that what we're seeing right now, uh, the slowdown we're seeing in the equipment business, is mainly related to the uncertainty there is in the market. Uh, that's one point. And the other point is that a lot of our customers in the flexo industry has been very busy uh, selling plates. So they've not been so busy looking at new equipment. Mm. Hopefully we will see uh, that the, equip- uh, sorry, the plate consumption stabil- stabilizes so that we, uh, we will then see... A, let's say, a pick up in the equipment business uh, when, when the pandemic hopefully is, uh, is beyond us. Uh, I, you know what I thought you would answer? I would say that it's because there is no Drupa and, uh, and Klunz Jensen is known for Drupa for your jazz band and your... And our uh, sausages. Uh, and yeah. your sausages, yes. right? So I thought that yes. was the main reason, but that was not oh, the case. We, we, can still, uh, we still provide a sausage if customers drop by in Denmark, so that's not an issue. <laughs> but, but, uh, but when you mention Drupa, it's, it, it, it could be... A, as, you, as I said before, I'm, I'm new to the industry, so I'm not really... Uh, I'm not the right guy to ask for the... For the <laughs> Drupa, uh, but you knew the impact. about the jazz band. I right? knew about the jazz. I was I've been told about the jazz band and also about the sausages. Mm. Uh, but but I think what uh, at least the industries I worked in before, uh, we've seen a less and less impact of these uh, trade shows because um, most companies when they when they are ready to launch a new product or or they want to buy uh, equipment, they do not want to wait for four years for launching or buying. So no. I think the dynamic in the in the whole world has been has been changing over the last uh, decades. Uh, of course, as I said, I cannot talk specifically to Drupa, but I think in general terms, um, trade shows is something that we will see less of in the future than mm. we've seen in the past. So what uh, what replaces it from Gloss Jensen's perspective? Is it that do you have like showrooms or is it virtual or do you go to customers? How do you? We uh, we go to customers. We uh, we expect to build a showroom in, uh, in Slovakia when mm. we are fully uh, up and running there. Uh, but we also use a lot uh, bringing customers to uh, to some of our current customers. So mm. because I think it's very important not not only for us but also for the customers to to uh, talk to like-minded people to hear how is the Glossin equipment working, mm. what's the pros, 
And what's the cons, if any? Can only imagine. <laughs> There's nothing. Very, right? very few. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but it, it's just it's just a different dynamic that you get from from bringing a customer to a heavy customer than sitting uh, at a trade show and. Uh, and drinking beers or champagne and, and telling the customers that, yes, of course it works. It, it gives a different feel when you, when you know for real. And you know, it's uh, kind of funny because I can't help thinking of that at the last Trooper where well, you were not there. Uh, and I think that, that uh, most people recognize what I'm saying now. Uh, the Glunz and Jensen booth has always been extremely busy mm-hmm. at the trade shows. So even if you wanted to have a demo or talk to a representative, it might even be more difficult because it's such a dense time uh, of showing equipment, mm-hmm. so maybe uh, maybe the strategy will will give you even more advantages by you know having the time and you know own the customer for that moment of yes. time where yes. you can uh, tell them the stories about yes. your thing. Is um, in general uh, uh, just m- maybe it's a stupid question, but I'll ask anyway. <laughs> uh, when you look at your customers, do you find that they are success- successful also due to the technologies that you deliver? Absolutely. Uh, the customer base we have are very generally very happy and very satisfied with our equipment and uh, some of the launches we've done here recently are also providing uh, and enhancing uh, more, efficient, uh, more efficiency with the customers. So mm. I think that's, a, that's definitely a strong selling point mm. of the Glunch Nielsen equipment. I mean, we are, we are known to be a high-end uh, manuf- equipment manufacturer, so we are definitely not the cheapest, but we are delivering... Uh, Cutting edge technology uh, and and good uh, good quality. And you have, I think that also, I think that most people recognize that you have also uh, not just been cutting edge, but you have also been innovative in a lot of areas. With this one, we spoke about before that sometimes you see uh, maybe not just from Klons and Jensen, but in all industries, you see some somebody uh, uh, copying maybe a little bit too much technology. Is that something that, that you see in your segment as well, or are, are you kind of exclusive in in where you are? Um, of course, we're trying to uh, to keep our IPs uh, tight, but uh, but I think at least compared to other industries I worked in, there seems to be a let's say a pretty open approach here to uh, to uh, getting good ideas from each other. Mm. So so uh, when you get new ideas, uh, the the best thing you can do is by basically protecting them by patents or figuring out how to do things that is more complicated to copy. That's one option. I think what what, what we are also uh, uh, be proud of is that we are, we we believe we believe the, that we deliver the best the best quality. Yeah. So one thing is that you may have the same functionality, but how long will it last? How many breakdowns will you have? And that kind of stuff. So, so we still uh, preserve uh, the Glunsen Jensen name as a, as a high-end uh, equipment manufacturer. And this is something that we that's our DNA. Yeah, and I think that also, as far as I remember, maybe, uh, I don't know if it's changed, but I think that you have always been uh, very well recognized also for your service uh, globally, right? Yes, I, I believe so. And, uh, and this is also a focus area for us that to make sure that we, uh, that we make sure our customers uh, are well serviced. Of course, uh, the current uh, travel restrictions may have, uh, may have caused some hiccups in that, I think not only for Glunz and Jensen, but, uh, but in general. Yeah. But, uh, but we have a pretty uh, broad service, service network, so uh, I'm hopeful that, uh, that our customers are, are happy with the service they're getting from us, for sure. Mm. Being uh, still a relatively new CEO of, of Glunz Jensen, uh, what, is, uh, your, what is your perspective of, uh, of, of your role in the future? And, and I'm, I know that we've been talking about a lot of about the equipment and, and, and how you see the market, but I was thinking that, that I, I, would, I would assume that every time you have a new CEO of a company, I know, of course, as being on, the, on, the, on a public company and also having a board that you uh, have to, and you have like big owner in, in is it Helio Group? Yeah. Heliograph, yeah. Heliograph, yeah. Um, from, your, from your chair, is that, what is the perspective of your business? That's a big question, yeah. So, I'm sorry uh, to ask so, that. No, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. But I think, for, so first of all, I mean, this, this, since I joined, uh, we've, been, we've been in a... In a critical situation, first of all, because uh, we've been transforming from offset into uh, into flexo. And Plus, you took the, the corona along with you, right? Yes, I brought the corona. <laughs> so no, no. And then we were hit by the corona. Not that it, uh, by no means, it should be a bad excuse, but but I think the circumstances uh, made uh, life a little uh, a little challenging for us uh, here over the summer. And um, and as I said before, we've tried to make the best of the crisis and. Mm. Uh, and fixed our internal issues, consolidated our manufacturing and that, uh, that kind of tasks. And mm. now with our new uh, chief commercial officer, we're looking uh, more outside the company. Uh, we're looking for new opportunities. As, I'm saying, as I said, we're launching the new ICGP product. Um, we're looking at new markets. Uh, so we are, we're hopeful and comfortable that we will uh, we'll have a bright future ahead of us. 
Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Pleasure having you here and uh, look forward to uh, seeing more good stuff from you guys.